We at Julia Computing are excited to introduce Julia Sim. The Julia programming language is growing rapidly. Its strong community is having significant impact in many fields. In order to further advance scientific methods and discovery, the founders of the language, along with a few key partners, started Julia Computing. And the foundation of Julia Computing is Julia Hub, an enterprise computing platform for distributed, cost-effective, and reproducible computing. Julia Hub offers an unparalleled Julia development experience and provides frictionless scaling for industrial problems. Julia Computing has additional applications on top of this foundation for a variety of fields. Here, we will take a look at Julia Sim for physical simulation. You are an engineer and you strive to create elegant designs. To maximize efficiency, you incorporate modeling in your design process. Now you can experiment with multiple designs and variable conditions. You set up models, analyze the results, and iterate with new experiments. Design decisions you make along the way are driven by data, and ultimately, this helps you arrive at better designs. This is a picture of what industrial modeling can look like, but there's often a huge challenge, and that's time. Model runtime is typically too long to perform iterative discovery cycles, and making these models faster is no easy feat. Accelerating a single model can be the labor equivalent of a PhD track, or it could take a team of experts working for six months. Engineers need the freedom to experiment, but right now simply lack the tooling. Let's illustrate this point with a story of numbers. What if your simulation takes two hours to complete? This isn't so bad, but we have to take into account the optimization process. So say it takes you 200 iterations to get a set of control parameters. You do that once, but you're not crazy about the result, so you do it again with different hyperparameters. Show that to your colleagues. Realize that it might not be the right solution for the business case. So you tweak things and run again. You might have to tweak again and again run. And then realize that you forgot certain plots, and so you run one more time. This brings you at 1,000 runs to get the job done. Someone in the modeling industry may even say 1,000 runs is a major underestimate, but this is what we'll use for the example moving forward. Traditionally, 1,000 runs of a two-hour simulation is 2,000 hours or eight and one-third day. So that's over eight days of runtime. So eight days if all the simulations were run in continuum, but that's never the case. So let's realistically expect the engineer to take weeks, maybe even one month, to do the analysis, write up the report, and then hand that over to the next team. Here's an alternative where we add just one step to this process. We train a surrogate of the original model. By observing many runs of the original simulation in varying states and applying scientific machine learning techniques, we generate a fast approximate model. So let's say it takes 1,000 simulations to train an accurate enough surrogate. All 1,000 simulations can be spun up parallel in cloud compute to deliver a surrogate model in about four hours. Next, you perform the optimization process to train the controller, determining optimal control parameters over 1,000 runs. However, each run of the surrogate model takes only one minute, and your controller can be trained in just two hours. You're almost done. Now just perform a test of the original model. That's two hours. And just like that, the controller is ready in one eight hour day. Write the report, move it on to the next team. You've gone down from one month to one day. This is how Julia Sim can be used in a workflow to reduce simulation runtime. We've already tested this method against real world results. For example, with this real world 8,000 equation HVAC model that achieved a 570 time speed up. And then ramping that up to a 100,000 equation scalable building model, we achieved an 80 time speed up which is incredible when you know that with current tooling, the best you can hope for is real time. This would allow us for, to compute a year of simulation time in just four days. And it's not limited to HVAC. Here's an example of a 1200 equation nonlinear circuit system that received a 274 times speed up. All these surrogate models achieve remarkably high accuracy. And all of this is made possible by blending traditional physical modeling with modern scientific machine learning. We're gonna walk through how Julia Sim can be integrated into your workflow with a real example. So take this model 
of a DCPM motor, which starts at no load speed and then a load step is applied and the armature temperature rises over time. This model investigates the influence of this temperature on the motor. The model takes the form of a functional mock-up unit, that is it follows the FMI standard, which is a crucial detail because this means that the model can be run in a number of modeling tools. Take a moment to get familiar with the model parameters, mainly the parameter names. We have voltage and load, T and J load. You'll see these when we configure the surrogate, so just be familiar with them for now. To begin, we can navigate to juliahub.com and we can launch this application, the JuliaSim FMU Accelerator. This application is launched just like any other application on Julia Hub. For instance, let's see here, if we hit the launch button, we can configure the type of machine that we want to use for this application. Now, one thing to note is that the compute that you choose to configure for this Julia Sim FMU Accelerator application will only affect the machine used for the GUI. When we train a surrogate, when we submit a job to be trained, it's going to auto scale depending on the complexity of your model. So none of your choices here are going to affect that. So just take note. Once you have something ready, you can launch it. And then once it's ready, you can connect. And when the application is ready, we're brought to this dashboard. There's nothing here right now. So let's go ahead and create a new job. And we'll load in an FMU. Remember, this is the same FMU that you're already using in your workflow. So while this uploads, let me explain what's happening. Because this model follows an FMI standard, we can understand all the model parameters and the structure of the model. And once it's loaded, we can hit continue. And now we can configure the exact parameter space of that model. So here, notice a few things. Here we have uh, three buttons at the top where we can export and load configurations, and we can also reset the GUI. Further down, we have options for the algorithm, which is going to be the, alg the algorithm that we use to train the surrogate, the reservoir size, which is the number of nodes that we'll use, and the number of sample points, which is the number of simulations that we'll use. Now, we can offer rules of thumb for what's best, but it's going to depend on your problem. And for this example, it's going to be really simple. Um, you'll see what we, what we put in here in a second. Let's just go down and see that we have time span. We have start, end, and time step for the model and then parameter space. So I have a configuration that should work well for this problem. So let's go ahead and load that and see what we're configuring. So we're going to choose the nonlinear projection algorithm. Don't worry about this. If you don't know right now, just know that there's linear and nonlinear algorithms. We're going to choose a reservoir size of three and number of sample points three. Again, remember this is a simple example and Scrolling down a little bit, we're going to run this from 0 to 3 with a time step of 0.1 with a parameter space here. So these are the parameters of this motor model, and we're defining the lower upper bounds along with the sample value. So with all this configured, we're ready to start the job. When this kicks off, again, it's going to auto scale and it's going to compute the surrogate for us. Once the job is submitted, we're back at the dashboard where we can see this is the name of the FMU that we uploaded. This is when we launched it. This is the state that it's in. So we're going to move through different states such as setting up the simulation, computing surrogates, generating diagnostics for the new model, and then generating that final FMU. We can also download the configuration that was used for this surrogate model, and we can see the report and download the generated FMU. And after just a little bit of time, we can see that the job is now in the state of generating the FMU, which means that we're ready to view the report. Now we've used some compute and we've generated this accelerated FMU, but it differs a little bit from our classical physical model. So we still need to understand this model. We still need to know when it's going to perform well, under what conditions is it uh, you know, safe to use the model. And so what you're seeing here is a diagnostic dashboard that's designed to help us understand uh, these kinds of problems that, that are going to come up. So first thing you're going to notice here is uh, we see the speed up that we've gained from the 
surrogate model. So in this case, we've got a 200 times speed up. Now, that's great, but again, let's let's try to understand what that means because this is an approximate model. So first thing you're gonna notice here, these vertical axes correspond to our model parameters. And I can turn them on and off here, but I wanna look at all of them in this case. So this is the J load model parameter, and this is the parameter space that we trained over. And all of these different lines coordinate to the different combinations of these model parameters and their values. And over here on the right is the absolute error. And you can see here that uh, I have the ability to see how many uh, of each value correspond to the magnitude of error. So here, dark purple is very low error and the bright yellow is high error. And so let's take the question of where is this model performing well? And to do that, we're going to queue into the, the dark purple portions of, of the axes. And this is interactive, so I can actually select And we see here that all of these other charts are reactive. So as I selected that, all the air on the right is, is adjusting to the, the different points that I've, I've, ch I've chosen because we're effectively filtering out some noise, right? We're going to filter out some, some different points uh, as we make these selections. So, so how do I choose, how do I, how do I find where the model performs well? Well, remember yellow is associated with high air and I can kind of trace some, some of these yellow lines back. And so I want to avoid those and stick to the dark purple. So let's do this. And actually that looks like that's yellow. Uh, I can also slide these axes around a little bit to try to get that kind of just right. Um, we can select multiple at one time. This is really all dependent upon your problem, but um, for my selections that I have here, um, under the parameter spaces uh, that I've selected, I can see that all of the air is under five here. Uh, this is absolute air. And again, notice that we have these two graphs on the bottom that are responsive to the selections up top. So here we have the percent air, and on the right we have the actual values of the ground truth is yellow and the surrogate model is purple. So first thing to note is that these are linked. So here I can see that the highest percent error occurs between zero and 0 0.5. And that is going to actually correspond to this portion of the graph on the right. And another thing to note is that I have two sliders here for parameters and state. So every permutation of parameters is, is, uh, we have the ability to look at every permutation of, of parameters and all the way on the far left of the slider is the best performing error and on the right is the worst. So as I slide to the right, all the way on the far right, we get where the error is the highest. And seeing here on the left that most of it occurs before 0 0.5, I can again zoom in and select that. And uh, let's just zoom in once more. And so I can see here the difference between the two uh, and the, the hover tool allows me to, to look a little bit closer at that. And again, I can do this. We have different states for our model. I can do this for the different states as well. And here uh, we're also seeing the values of the parameters that are selected for this particular combination that we have. And so the, the reason uh, behind the design for all of this is everybody's model is going to be different. Everyone's going to ask different questions. We wanted to make sure that we provided the tools that's flexible enough to answer the questions for your particular model and your particular use case. So I gave the example of where we might see, uh, understand where the model is performing not as good. Equivalently, we can try to see where this model is performing poorly, more poorly, uh, these lighter colors, uh, and maybe we want to retrain the surrogate over those points. So, um, there's not too many of them, but I can, I can kind of, you know, try to, to, to zero in on some of those. And 
let's let's say this selection. So so here I'm going to say that you know over these selections uh, things aren't performing very well, and so maybe I want to retrain the surrogate specifically over these parameter spaces, and we have the ability to do that. So really, this is designed to help you ask those questions that come up when you're analyzing your model and give you some comfort level so that you understand how this model performs and improve it if you wish. So let's briefly summarize what just happened. We took an FMU out of our existing workflow and we used Julia Sim to compute a surrogate and generate a new accelerated FMU of this model. We also took a look at how we might diagnose and analyze this model so that we can better understand where it fits in with our use case. So that's an example of how Julia Sim can complement your modeling workflow while integrating with your existing tool sets. Julia Sim, however, is a full simulation platform to build, run, and analyze your results. And because it's built on Julia Hub, it has all the power of distributed compute and modern architecture. So we can computationally burst to your industrial modeling needs. Now, when we generate that accelerated FMU, we have to remember that there is a compute cost tied to that. And not to dismiss it, but what Julia Sim is offering is a new choice that we previously didn't have. We can now ask, is it worth four hours of compute to solve this problem today, to move on to the next problem or the next phase in your cycle? And this is the freedom that Julia Sim can offer you.